had planned to rent a car for two days, traveling alone along the section of Ruta 40, or called Ruta de los Siete Lagos, Seven Lakes. But then I met Ana. We met over tea at breakfast at an eco-hostel in El Bolson. And Ana had met Sean the week before in El Chalten. We were all back in Bariloche for one night, coincidentally at the same bar, and decided to travel together the next day. Ruta 40 spans the entire length of Argentina, over 5,000 kilometers from the southern tip of Patagonia to the very north in the province of Jujuy. The section between Villa Langostura and San Martín de los Andes is called La Ruta de los Siete Lagos, for the seven lakes that sit between the two small mountain towns. There actually seem to be more than just seven lakes along this route, but the official seven are Nahuelhuapi, Lago Correntoso, Lago Espejo, Lago Escondido, Lago Villarino, Lago Falkner, Lago Mashónico. Okay. Okay. Day one. I picked up the car at 2 p.m., giving us a full 48 hours of freedom. Okay, ready? Ready! Ready! <laughs> Our first stop, Nahuel Huapi. Nahuel Huapi is the largest of the lakes and the one that touches the town of Bariloche. stop in the small Swiss-inspired town of Villa Langostura, where the route of the Seven Lakes officially begins. So because this is a Swiss place, I got some chocolates with raspberry. Because raspberry is famous here, plus raspberry ice cream and lemon. The next couple hours were full of making more stops, seeing nature, seeing lakes. ducks over here there's like five or six ducks and the mom is so funny she's just perched on her little stand Only one way to find out. We got a couple of boozers over here. <laughs> started to feel late and we were all feeling very, very hungry. We then drove directly to San Martín de los Andes, each one of us staying in slightly different accommodation because we had all booked at different times. It's a pretty peaceful morning, except that the neighbors are now weed whacking at 8 in the morning, so except that. I'm staying at a little cabin that's about 10 minutes just outside of San Martín de los Andes. It's a room in a bigger house, so you share the kitchen in the bathroom. So I have just a couple minutes before Anna comes over. She's staying about a five, six minute walk from here, and then Sean is actually staying in the town of San Martín. So 
So far, I love San Martín de los Andes. Between Bariloche, El Bolson, and San Martín, I definitely like San Martín the best. For me, it's less touristy and less like ski resorty vibe than Bariloche, but it's more of a town than El Bolson. I could live here, like I could see myself here. It's really cute. So Anna, what do you think about San Martín? Pretty. Do you like it better than El Bolson? Yes. Uh, yes. And better than Bariloche? A hundred times better. <laughs> Continuing with the tradition of how we met in the hippie hostel in El Bolson that was all vegan, we are now at a vegan cafe in San Martín de los Andes, and everything looks so good. I'm so used to being alone and traveling alone that part of me feels like I don't want to make my schedule with other people. I want to take my time. I want to go at my own pace. But at the same time, I appreciate that I'm not the only one who has to do all the work. Anna is the one who just figured out all the hiking trails and I didn't even have to worry about that. It does take some of the stress off traveling when you travel with other people. Honestly, also, it's really nice to have company at dinner. I'm so used to having a table for one. Oh, hi. Talking so much shit. After we each asked around at each of our accommodations about the best things to do in the area, we set out on a hike called Cerro Colorado, about 12 kilometers outside of San Martín de los Andes. Do you have to okay. Oh. We're in the parking lot about to climb to Cerro Colorado. So it's come full circle and going home. We found a dog and a French guy with a car broken down. Where, where are you going, Sean? Going to hydrate the bushes. Yeah, it's a very dry area. It's super important. We want to avoid bushfires. Okay, so we're just starting out. How do you guys feel? Excellent day. <laughs> yes, caliente. You're skinny dipping and you're skinny dipping. <laughs> we got a late start, so it's the middle of the afternoon right now as we are starting the hike. So it's pretty hot, but being under the cloud or I mean being under the cover of the trees here is nice. Sometimes when you're traveling alone, you really long to meet other people and you really hope to meet other people. And other times when you are traveling with people, you start to miss that feeling of being alone. Yeah, it was only like 30 minutes, but I think there might be more. Not a bad view. Where's Anna? Oh. I pushed her off. Oh. Hey. What do you think? Yeah. <laughs> We're not there. We're not at the top. Up. It's a little windy up here, but the views of Lago Lacar are exceptional. On our way back down the mountain, we made a few local friends. We made it! Woo! <laughs> and after that, we headed down the dirt road about 12 more kilometers to reach the Plesha Shuko which are actually five mini plashas on a little peninsula. There's beach one, two, three, four, and five. And the only one that has a real name is Plasha Turquesa, which is Plasha number one. I'm 
so often in my own company that adjusting to being around other people all the time can often feel a little bit overwhelming and a little bit tiring. Even more so if the energy doesn't totally feel like it's flowing between everyone, if it doesn't feel like everyone is like a cohesive group. Sometimes the energy feels great between groups of new people and sometimes it doesn't and that's okay, that's just how it is, that's a part of traveling. <laughs> oh wow, look at that pour. Nice foamy pour. <laughs> There we go. Look at that pour. Look at that pour, folks. Still pretty crappy. <laughs> Pretty much just foam. It's about 5.36. It's really peaceful. There's like some families hanging out, but it feels so relaxed. You could easily spend a whole day here. It's super chill and everywhere you look, it's beautiful. It's just so calm. <laughs> At Plesha Turquesa, when you're level with the water down at the beach, it doesn't really look turquoise, but there's a little path. And if you go just above the water and look down, it's amazingly turquoise. And the water is so clear, I really had like ganas to jump in. Once hunger started kicking in again, we decided to drive the 30 minutes back down the dirt road, back to San Martin de los Andes, back into town. It was a long day. The sun goes down here really late at like nine o'clock. So all of a sudden it's 10 o'clock and it's dark and you're like, oh my God, it's 10 o'clock. So tomorrow we're leaving early. It's already late, almost 11 o'clock. And I feel like I just barely got home and showered. I'm gonna head to bed in just a couple minutes so we can start our return back to Bariloche tomorrow. So for now, good night. Oh, you said kitty. Oh, what a good kitty. Because we needed to be back in Bariloche by 2 p.m. on that last day, the morning started pretty early. On our way back down to Bariloche, we stopped at all the little spots and the miradores and the lookouts along the way that we had missed on the way up. This is easily my favorite lake so far. The water here is so clear. It's like a clear turquoise water and you can just see everything in the bottom. It seriously makes me want to jump in because it's completely clear. It's funny because we parked and immediately started hiking down when in reality there's a better spot just to ride along the road where you can see a perfect view of the Cascada. So this lake is cool, it's nice, it's very calm, but it's right off the main road. But there is a little beach. I think if you had a little boat or something to go on the water, it'd be pretty neat. Ooh, close calls. Close calls, mm -hmm. everybody. <laughs> Not much to see from this mirador. That's pretty much it. One little peak. Well, I think I understand why they call it Escondido. You can barely see it. Espejo Chico is several minutes off of the main road. And so because of that, it's pretty chill. We're just at this camping site here and there's a few families, but it's really quiet. And I understand why they call it Espejo because the reflection is very clear. It's a mirror.
When we finally entered Bariloche around 2 p.m., we were just in time to catch the World Cup game between Argentina and Mexico. Our journey together ended, the car went back to its home, and I came to my new home for the next five days. And in that new home, I really looked forward to having five days on my own to be by myself. I can be a very outgoing person, but I also really need alone time to build my energy back up. So I'm really looking forward to the next five days of being on my own, not having to make conversation, just existing. Bariloche is definitely one of the best places to base yourself in this region because there's so much around it. So if you're curious about what else to do in or around Bariloche, just click on this video here. Why not?